Good morning YouTube. In today's video I'll walk you through the process of transferring my two Comcast business phone lines over to Google Voice. So I started off with this tutorial page on the OBHI website. A link in the video description. As noted here, this is a two-step process for landlines because Google Voice only supports mobile number transfers. If you are thinking of doing this, be sure to do all of these phone number porting checks both with Google Voice and with your selected mobile carrier to make sure the numbers can be ported all the way through. I've seen a number of different approaches to the landline to mobile porting. Some use a low-cost prepaid phone from AT&T and have the number ported to it. In my case, I had two numbers and this T-Mobile prepaid SIM approach seemed to be the most straightforward. And the prepaid SIMs were $10 each when I purchased them. Here's an overview of the process. So both SIMs were inserted into an unlocked dual SIM Kubot Note S phone. With the prepaid SIMs, you can't use the online porting form. You need to call the phone number listed on the T-Mobile webpage. I called on a Saturday, gave them my two phone numbers, the voice mail pin, the Comcast account number, then sat back and waited. Sunday, I get a call that they needed the service zip code to verify with Comcast, so you can save a day by giving them that information up front. Monday, I get a call that Comcast was requesting a single two-number porting request instead of two one-number requests. Finally, on Thursday, I get a text message saying the porting is complete and welcome to T-Mobile. So over on my Google Voice account, I request a temporary phone number and then initiate a transfer of the T-Mobile number. So in the Google Voice transfer form your account number is your prepaid SIM phone number and the cost for that is $20 and a few hours later I get an email saying there's a problem with the request and they need the PIN number. So now the transfer form has a field for the PIN number which you need to fill in. It wasn't there initially. And 24 hours later I get another email welcoming me to Google Voice. Now I had a decision to make what to do with the second fax number. With Comcast, I had one account and two numbers, so I guess I had that in my mind, and Google Voice does allow for this. To do this, you make your original temporary number permanent. That's a $20 cost. Then you start another transfer with your second phone number. I started down this path until I read farther and found this option combines the two numbers into one phone. This would be great if you had, say, a sales and a support number and you wanted to be able to answer both lines on one phone. But I had a phone and a fax and needed each number to go to separate devices. After kicking myself for wasting $20, I hopped onto Gmail and set up a fax email account, then used that to make a new Google Voice fax account. So now repeat all these above steps on the second number at T-Mobile and 24 hours later I had a fax number on Google Voice. So you need to make sure you have this Google Chat forwarding enabled to your Google Voice account this is how the OB202 talks to Google Voice. Now hop over to the OB Talk web page. You set up your account and register your OB202 device and then run the Google Voice setup for the two numbers. On the OB202, you have up to four service providers here and then you have your two phones. So you simply select which service provider you want to set up and then inside of there you enter your Google Voice email and password and it's ready to go. So you can see I have phone one set up for voice calls which is service provider two and phone two is set up for service provider three 
which is my fax number. You also need to set up an E911 service per government rules, at least in the US and Canada. So I initially selected this Anvio service as OB has a built-in button to set that up and that costs $25 a year. You can't make or receive calls without doing this. So all was good to go, except I found that the caller ID in Google Voice is crippled. Google Voice offers two caller ID options, and you can display the call number, which is great if you have multiple lines into one phone, or you can display the caller's number. But because Google Voice isn't tied into the phone system like a real carrier, they don't have access to the caller ID databases for caller name information. On the Obitalk forum, it seems that Callcentric offers a nice workaround for this issue and a lower cost E91 service to boot. So after kicking myself for blowing another $25, I sign up for a call centric account, which is $1.50 a month, and this diagram shows how this works with the OB202. On the OB202, I added a call centric as a new service provider, and I have that service going to phone number one. Then I add the new call centric phone number to the Google Voice account and enable forwarding to it and then you disable Google Chat in your call centric account you need to enable the caller ID CNAM or caller name option it's off by default check out the last page of this Obitalk thread for the nitty gritty I left my fax number alone as I don't care about caller ID with that and this means my fax line costs me nothing. If anyone is interested in the details of the fax line setup, I can make a follow-up video on that. It works perfectly with the OB202. Lastly, I deleted the Envio service as it's now redundant. Whew, that was about a week of hassles, but was it worth it? Before, I was paying Comcast $96.14 a month for two lines, voicemail, and assorted fees and taxes. After, I'm paying $1.50 a month for the call centric E911 service, and that's less than what Comcast charged for even a single voicemail account. And I'm not paying any of these pesky fees and taxes either. Also, saving about 4 kilowatt hours a month on my electric bill. So with the hardware and setup costs, I'll break even in about two months. Oh, and after all the bitching about the recent Comcast email migration mess, Comcast did comp me one month of service. How does Google Voice compare to Comcast Business Voice? It's so much nicer. Email notifications are almost instant compared to Comcast where they were delayed for hours or never even arrived. Comcast only allowed for blocking a maximum of 12 numbers and it was a tedious process to do that. Google Voice has unlimited call blocking and it's easily done online. Google Voice has voicemail spam filtering like this treasure. Hello, this call is officially a final notice from my RS. Internal Revenue Service is filing lawsuit against you. To get more information about this case file, please call immediately on our department number, 410-946-2404. This is awesome. All those junk mail calls that used to have my phone ringing all day end up in the spam folder. I would recommend this to anyone tired of paying Comcast for their clunky, overpriced business phone service. If anyone has questions about this process, post up in the comment section below. And if you found this video informative, please rate and share. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated on new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.